The National FAA Safety Team presents Non-Towered Airports, In Control or Out of Control? This presentation is brought to you by my colleagues Brian Stamper, Lee Unger, and myself, Sarah Nilsson, all FAST team reps here in Arizona. Let's look at today's menu. We'll begin with the problem. Some bad pilot behavior at non-towered airports. Some video of a near miss at Marana Regional. Reports from pilots, NASA ASRS reports more specifically, and a Flying Magazine article showing how this is a nationwide issue. Then we'll come up with our solutions, why we made this training video, some CFRs, some excerpts from the AIM, the Advisory Circular on Point, Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, AOPA's resources, and our own FAST team resources. But first, let's give away our freebies. All the sources mentioned in this video are free and all are available to you. The links have been placed in the bottom of the description of this video. Any pilot who has spent significant time flying around non-towered airports has probably experienced aircraft in the pattern without a radio, aircraft transmitting incorrectly, and aircraft choosing not to give position reports at all. Nearly 20,000 airports in the United States are non-towered, compared to approximately 500 that do have towers. While the FAA highly encourages radio reports over CTAF, there is no legal requirement for it. We'll begin with this shocking video, courtesy of Jessica Cox and Patrick Chamberlain. And in the interest of time, I'm going to fast forward to the good part. Keep your eye, especially right here in the top left hand corner, right by your vent There goes the system. At the 1445 mark, you can see it flying right underneath her plane, 100 feet below. This video was but one example of bad pilot behavior, leading to a near miss in the air. NASA's ASRS reports show that these occurrences are all too frequent. While we are focusing on Marana in this presentation, it should be noted that this problem exists across the nation. Here is an excerpt of another, this time from the Aviation Safety Reporting System. As we landed on runway XX, still rolling on the runway, we noticed the Seneca landing on the opposite threshold, runway XY. Not once did they report their position as they were coming down to the airport. The aircraft landed and bounced a bit and we thought they were going around, but the aircraft came in our direction, ignoring us. We were forced to run into the grass to avoid a collision. Because this is a nationwide problem, major flight training magazines and blogs, as well as the FAA, have been very vocal on this topic. Here's another example. This time from the 2020 March issue called CTAF for a reason. This is an article written by Christopher Watson. Pilots who fly out of non-towered airports, according to Christopher, are nervous about talking to ATC. And pilots accustomed to flying in controlled airspace are anxious about flying into a non-towered field where there's no ATC to watch your six. At non-towered airports, you and your fellow pilots function as ATC, but it's all voluntary. It only works if we accept and share that responsibility. Here's a direct quote from Brian, my colleague at the FAST team. It occurred to me that there may be another systemic issue with all the training around large controlled busy airports. Maybe it warrants a separate but related discussion about non-towered airport operations. My thought was about how dense the controlled airspace is around Phoenix. All the airports surrounding Phoenix are also controlled fields with moderate to high volumes of traffic. Students at any of these locations have every move of every minute of their flight controlled by someone sitting on their shoulder. From the time they start the engine, every turn during taxi, takeoff, directions to and from practice areas, and every step back to a parked airplane, 
are all controlled in detail by someone other than the student pilot. Except for time in a few well-defined practice areas, every maneuver on ground and air is directed by someone else. For a student who never has to decide how to exit or enter a traffic pattern, or even coordinate with another airplane taxi, taxiing during most of their primary training, I'm beginning to see how they have so little skill in a non-towered environment. The only time they get away from the densely controlled airspace is that one trip to meet the cross-country requirements into a non-towered airport, like say Marana or Ryan, with an instructor before they are on their own to finish the solo cross-country time. I think this may be an important discussion and request to the schools and CFIs in these highly controlled areas that more time is direly needed to ensure students are competent outside the severely directed environment before they are sent on solo flights. Brian also shared these two snapshots just to prove how congested the area is that students flight train in around Phoenix. So why did we create this training video? The three of us, Brian, Lee and myself, Sarah, decided to share the resources that are available to educate pilots so that perhaps we can be more cognizant of this problem. We'll begin at the very top and work our way down. The CFRs first. Right of way rules, 14 CFR 91.113, and then non-towered airport traffic patterns and procedures, 91.126 and 27. I glean my CFRs from ecfr.gov mainly because this is updated currently every week and I don't need to wait till the next publication of the Far Aim book, which might be out, date, out of date. We begin in 91.113. These are right-of-way rules that apply except water operations. When weather conditions permit, Regardless of whether an operation is conducted under instrument flight rules or visual flight rules, vigilance shall be maintained by each person operating an aircraft, so as to see and avoid other aircraft. When a rule of this section gives another aircraft the right of way, the pilot shall give way to that aircraft and may not pass over, under, or ahead of it, unless well clear. We'll fast forward now down to the landing portion of this reg. Aircraft while on final approach to land and or while landing have the right of way over other aircraft in flight or operating on the surface except that they shall not take advantage of this rule to force an aircraft off the runway surface which has already landed and is attempting to make way for an aircraft on final approach when two or more aircraft are approaching an airport for the purpose of landing the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way but it shall not take advantage of this rule to cut in front of another which is on final approach to land or to overtake that aircraft. Looking now at 91126, which governs operations on or in the vicinity of an airport in class golf airspace. Unless otherwise authorized or required, each person operating an aircraft on or in the vicinity of an airport in a class golf airspace must comply with the requirements of this section. When approaching to land at an airport without an operating control tower in class golf airspace, each pilot of an airplane must make all turns to the left unless the airport displays approved light signals or visual markings indicating that turns should be made to the right, in which case the pilot must make all turns to the right. 91.127, same thing applies but this time to class echo airspace. We'll move now to the Aeronautical Information Manual. Just like the ecfrs.gov, I also get this off the FAA's website as it contains the latest and greatest, most up-to-date information. The AIM is the FAA's official guide to basic flight information and air traffic control procedures. The AIM contains the basic aeronautical knowledge information required to fly in the United States National Airspace System. Looking at Chapter 4 in the AIM, Traffic Advisory Practices at Airports Without Operating Control Towers, more specifically Chapter 4-1-9. There is no substitute for alertness while in the vicinity of an airport. It is essential that pilots be alert 
and look for other traffic and exchange traffic information when approaching or departing an airport without an operating control tower. This is of particular importance since other aircraft may not have communication capability or in some cases pilots may not communicate their presence or intentions when operating into or out of such airports. To achieve the greatest degree of safety it is essential that all radio equipped aircraft transmit and receive on a common frequency identified for the purpose of airport advisories. The key to communicating at an airport without an operating control tower is selection of the correct common frequency. The acronym CTAF, which stands for Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, is synonymous with this program. A CTAF is the frequency designated for the purpose of carrying out airport advisory practices while operating to or from an airport without an operating control tower. Pilots of inbound traffic should monitor and communicate as appropriate on the designated CTAF from 10 miles to landing. Pilots of departing aircraft should monitor and communicate on the appropriate frequency from startup, during taxi, and until 10 miles from the airport, unless CFRs or local procedures require otherwise. Pilots of aircraft conducting other than arriving or departing operations at altitudes normally used by arriving and departing aircraft should monitor and communicate on the appropriate frequency while within 10 miles of the airport, unless required to do so otherwise by CFRs or local procedures. Such operations include parachute jumping, dropping, unroute, practicing maneuvers, etc. A quick shout out here to Angel Flight West. Since I'm a command pilot for them and I use my airplane for good, we have been advised to go a little bit above and beyond the minimum requirements of the regs. We're advised to listen to CTAF for other traffic starting 20, not 10, miles or so before, as well as while we're in the traffic area. And talking of the traffic area, let's revise the traffic pattern. This diagram is gleaned from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. It shows the standard traffic pattern legs, which was designed to create a logical safe flow of traffic at an airport. Note that standard patterns are left unless otherwise shown on the charts, and I'll get to that in a minute, where it might be a right hand pattern. This is the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, also available free on the FAA's website. Two chapters are very important to this discussion, Chapter 14 and Chapter 15. All aircraft should monitor CTAF when operating in the vicinity of non-towered airports. This CTAF can be found on sectional charts in the US chart supplement, formerly known as the AFD. Non-towered airports without a flight service station generally will have a Unicom frequency. I find my chart supplements off the FAA's website on this page. As you can see in this diagram, I've typed in Kilo Alpha Victor Quebec, which is Marana. Once you click on that, you'll see this PDF that you can easily download and read. In this diagram, you can see the communications frequency for CTAF as 123.0. Here's a snapshot from ForeFlight, this one off my phone. The C in a circle, also denoting CTAF. Let's move now to the advisory circular on point, AC 90-66 Bravo. This advisory circular calls attention to regulatory requirements, recommended operations and communications procedures for operating at an airport without a control tower or an airport with a control tower that operates only part time. It recommends traffic patterns, communications phraseology and operational procedures for use by aircraft, lighter than air aircraft, gliders, parachutes, rotorcraft and ultralight vehicles. It begins with some definitions. 
The FAA believes that observance of a traffic of a standard traffic pattern and the use of CTAF procedures as detailed in this advisory circular will improve safety and efficiency of aeronautical operations at airports without operating control towers. Use of standard traffic patterns, left turns for all aircraft and CTAF procedures by radio equipped aircraft are required at all airports without operating control towers unless indicated otherwise by visual markings, light gun signals, airport publications or published approach procedure. It is recognized that other traffic patterns, right turns, may already be in common use at some airports or that special circumstances or conditions exist that may prevent use of the standard traffic pattern. Right-hand patterns are noted at airports on an aeronautical chart with an RP designator and the applicable runway next to the airport symbol. The pilot in command's primary responsibility is to see and avoid other aircraft and to help them see and avoid his or her aircraft. Unmanned aircraft, we call them drones, like manned aircraft, are also allowed to operate in class golf without specific air traffic control authorization and without required radio communications. The remote piloting command and the unmanned aircraft system operator must always yield right of way to manned air aircraft and not interfere with manned aircraft operations. To achieve the greatest degree of safety, it is essential that all radio-equipped aircraft transmit and receive on a common frequency identified for the purpose of airport advisories, as identified in appropriate aeronautical publications. Pilots use the correct airport name as identified in appropriate aeronautical publications when exchanging traffic information to reduce the risk of confusion. To help identify one airport from another, the correct airport name should be spoken at the beginning and end of each self-announced transmission. Pilots clarify intentions if a communication sent by either their aircraft or another aircraft was potentially not received or misunderstood. Pilots limit communications on CTAF frequencies to safety essential information regarding arrivals, departures, traffic flow, takeoffs and landings. The CTAF should not be used for personal communications. Self-announce is a procedure whereby pilots broadcast their aircraft call sign, position, altitude and intended flight activity or ground operation on the designated CTAF. When referring to a specific runway, pilots should use the runway number and not the phrase active runway, because quite frankly, there is no of official active runway at a non-towered airport. To help identify one airport from another when sharing the same frequency, the airport name should be spoken at the beginning and end of each self-announced transmission. Pilots are reminded here that the use of the phrase any traffic in the area, please advise, is not a recognized self-announced position and or intention phrase and should not be used under any condition. Any traffic that is present at the time of your self-announcement that is capable of radio communications should reply without being prompted to do so. Arriving aircraft should be at traffic pattern altitude and allow for sufficient time to view the entire traffic pattern before entering. Entries into traffic patterns while descending may create collision hazards and should be avoided. Entry to the downwind leg should be at a 45 degree angle or beam the midpoint of the runway to be used for landing. The pilot may use discretion to choose an alternate type of entry, especially when intending to cross over midfield based upon the traffic and communication at the time of the arrival. Again, from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, here are some diagrams to illustrate traffic pattern entry. Pilots should note that at some airports, overflying the field and performing midfield entries to the traffic pattern is unsafe. For example, AWOS may include an announcement not to overfly the field during parachute operations. 
Missed approaches on overflying or midfield pattern entries may have trajectories that pass directly through a drop zone or even an aerobatic box. Please, please, please always consult the U.S. chart supplement, charts, notums, AWAS, etc. for specific information for the airport you're heading to or over. Here are some FAA best practices for airfield safety. Encourage the use of correct terminology. Eliminate distractions. Obtain and use airport diagrams. Conduct clearing turns. Maintain a sterile cockpit while taxiing. Maintain appropriate taxi speed. Encourage pilots to have their eyes out when taxiing. A heads up policy. Attend safety seminars and programs on runway safety. Improve safety by teaching, advocating, stressing, and understanding situational awareness. Customize runway safety presentations for targeted audiences, such as this one. Cite airport specific runway safety web pages. Distribute runway safety materials to every aviation entity. Package and distribute runway safety materials to flight schools. Realize that every airport is unique and presents its own set of runway safety challenges. Stay alert, stay alive, and declare a war on errors. Make it everyone's responsibility. Moving now to another very important resource, also free, this one from AOPA. AOPA pilots are hundreds of thousands strong and span 75 countries, representing the largest aviation community in the world. The AOPA team, operating out of offices in Frederick, Maryland and Washington, D.C., exists to protect and to grow the incredible privilege that we call general aviation and that we are very proud to be a part of. Whether it is through educating the public about the fun and the utility that aircraft can provide, preparing resources like this one and training materials to enhance the skills of pilots everywhere, or even advocating for aviation within government agencies. It is AOPA's job to maintain the strength and vitality of our flying community. And now for some FAA safety team resources that I promised you at the beginning. Under the resources tab of the faasafety.gov website, you can find Tucson practice areas that describe not just local practice areas, but also other safety issues. For example, you click on the resources tab, then you click on library tab, then you click on local safety information. At that point, you will find this PDF that you can download. Now, as fast team reps, that put this together for the Tucson area, we would love to encourage other FAST team reps across the nation to do likewise and store it in this repository on faasafety.gov. This is an example from that document. It shows these areas that are practice areas. There's also areas that show drop zones and there's also aerobatic practice areas which we should be alert to. We'll end this video here with a call to action. Please help by giving special attention to safe operations at non-towered airports whenever you are flight planning and flying, whenever a pilot is being trained and or evaluated by a CFI, a DPE, a chief pilot, a chief flight instructor, a check airman, etc. for progress checks, practical tests, wings, flight reviews and airman currency checks. With safety concerns at non-towered airports, along with temporarily reduced hours of operation for towers across the country, knowing safe operating procedures at non-towered airports is especially timely, serving safety now and going forward. On behalf of my colleagues, Brian and Lee, I would like to thank you for watching this presentation on non-towered airports, in control or out of control. Thank you for your time and attention.